last talk I tried to indicate how the doctrine of the Trinity the threefold character of God lies at the very heart of our Christian faith and I would like to continue along that theme when I say God states St. Gregory the Theologian, I mean Father, Son and Holy Spirit. For him, the doctrine of the Trinity is not just a possible way of thinking about God. It is the only way of thinking about God. The same personal Trinitarian approach is to be found in the Nicene Creed, which all Christians share. We begin by affirming, I believe in one God. But we don't continue by making a series of abstract statements about God. We don't go on, I believe in a primordial ground of being in an uncaused cause, in an unmoved mover. We don't bring in philosophical notions like that. No, in the creed we say, I believe in one God, the Father, and then a little later, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, and then later on, and in the Holy Spirit, so again it is the same personal trinitarian approach that we find in gregory the theologian belief in one god means belief in the one god who is trinity in the one god who is father son and holy spirit this is our christian approach to the doctrine of the trinity now at the end of my talk last time, I asked how can we make the doctrine of the Trinity more personal? How can we be able to say with full feeling what St. Gregory the theologian says about the Trinity? My Trinity. How are we to feel that faith in the Trinity is part of my personal story, the heart of my life. Now, it is often said of the human animal that it is an animal that laughs and weeps. It would, however, be closer to the truth to say that the human animal is an animal that creates signs and symbols. You and I are symbol makers. Symbolic thinking is fundamental to our human personhood. And the fact that all too many people today uh, no longer feel the power and attraction of symbols has surely led to a tragic impoverishment in our human life, to an unrecognised yet burning thirst. A symbol or icon often expresses more of the truth than a reasoned argument can do, and it expresses that truth in a manner that is simpler, more accessible, more persuasive. What then are the symbols and images that can help to initiate you and me into the mystery of the Trinity, 
so that we feel the Trinitarian faith is part of my personal story. What are the analogies, the paradigms, that could make the Trinitarian mystery come alive for me? There are, in fact, many types of images that have been used of the Trinity. Some are to be found in scripture, others in tradition. But these many symbols are on the whole taken from three main sources, from sight, from sound, and from the human person. In this, my second talk, let us look at the first two, the analogies from sight and sound. Now, in symbolic thinking, in the use of analogies, the various models or images that we employ are not to be envisaged as alternatives. They are not mutually exclusive. On the contrary, we can and should employ several or all of them simultaneously. Any single paradigm is likely to prove misleading if developed in isolation, for the different symbols balance and correct each other. So let's be maximalists, not minimalists. There's no single key to the doctrine of the Trinity. And so we use, need to use a variety of approaches. Let us take as our slogan, safety in numbers. Two preliminary cautions are appropriate. First, we should not ask of any symbol or image more illumination than it can legitimately provide. None is to be regarded as exact or exhaustive. The symbols are, to use a phrase from Gregory the Theologian, no more than dim shadows. St. Gregory writes in one of his poems, I long to be in that unshaken dwelling place where my trinity is found in the gathered brightness of its splendour, the trinity whose dim shadows exalt me. So these symbols that I hope will exalt us are to be seen as dim shadows. They are not exact descriptions. They are signposts. And secondly, None of these images or analogies is to be regarded as a proof of the doctrine of the Trinity. The doctrine of the Trinity is not something that we can prove. It is something given to us through divine revelation. How do we know that God is Trinity? Because that is the way God is presented to us in Holy Scripture. That is the way God has been understood in tradition. That is the way God is disclosed to us in our personal prayer. But don't look for a proof. Trinitarian faith is not a conclusion of an argument. It's a datum, a starting point. So let's take a look then how these images and analogies may endue our Trinitarian faith with life and fire. So let's start from the images that come from sight. In the ancient world, light was considered to be the least material reality in visible creation. And so it's natural 
that the Trinitarian image is derived from the realm of sight should most frequently involve light or radiance, the sun or the element of fire. The analogies take two main forms. First, the Trinity is sometimes likened to three torches, the second and third torches being kindled from the first. Now you won't find that analogy actually in Scripture. All that Scripture says is God is light, but it doesn't develop the image in a Trinitarian way. But by the second century, the Christian writers known as the Apologists, particularly Justin Martyr and Tatian, do understand the image of light or fire in a interpersonal way. Actually, they apply it only to Father and Son, but we could easily include the Holy Spirit in their analogies, making it threefold and not just twofold. So then, the image of a torch, and then a second torch lit from it, and then a third torch lit from it. The advantage of this image is that the light of the first torch is not diminished when the other two are kindled from it. We can apply that to the Trinity. In the Trinity, each person possesses the totality of the Godhead in its undiminished wholeness, not just a third of that totality. Let me quote a passage from the 7th century writer St. Maximus the Confessor. The divinity is not partially in the Father, nor is the Father part of God. The divinity is not partially in the Son, nor is the Son part of God. The divinity is not partially in the Holy Spirit, nor is the Holy Spirit part of God. For the divinity is not divisible, nor is the Father or the Son or the Holy Spirit incomplete God. On the contrary, the whole and complete divinity is completely in the complete Father, completely in the complete Son, completely in the complete Holy Spirit. So the three torch analogy helps to convey this idea that the complete Godhead is present in each person. The one torch is not diminished when the second is lit from it. But the three torch analogy has an obvious shortcoming. It is too tritheist. Three torches are three distinct objects. In that way, this analogy doesn't convey sufficiently the fact that Father, Son and Spirit are not three gods. They are one God. And though there is distinction within the Godhead, there is no separation. Perhaps you could slightly modify the three torch analogy by emphasizing how each is kindled from the other. Uh, sometimes the three torch analogy is shown with the three torches pointing towards one another and their flames coalesce. But even so, the image doesn't really convey a sufficient notion of the organic unity of the Godhead. As I've said, all these analogies have their disadvantages. On the whole, then, the Greek and Latin fathers prefer a second, more unitary analogy based on light. Father and Son are to be likened respectively to the disk of the Sun and to the ray or effulgence that shines out from it. Now this um, image 
has an immediate basis in the New Testament. At the beginning of the epistle to the Hebrews, Hebrews 1, 3, the Son is described as the radiance of the Father's glory, the light shining out from the glory, the luminosity of the Father. So one has a certain basis for this kind of image in Scripture itself. So Justin, as well as using the three torch analogy, also uses this sun radiance image. Tertullian, in the early third century, gives to the analogy a triadic form. He likens the Father to the Son, S-U-N, the Word that comes from the Father to the ray shining forth from the solar disk. And he likens the Spirit to the apex, as he calls it, or illumination point on which the ray of light falls. Sun radiance language is taken up in the Nicene Creed when Christ is said to be light from light. The evident advantage of the sun radiance analogy as compared with that of the three torches is that it suggests with greater subtlety a distinction without a separation. Uh, Tertullian also uses other analogies for the Trinity. For example, he speaks of the Father as the root, the Son as the branch,